Oop, real quick. Good morning, YouTube. Anybody out there that's watching us? Uh, my name is Quentin Avery. This is my beautiful wife, Dr. Avery. Good morning. How you doing, Dr. Avery? Good. You doing? You doing good, huh? Yeah. Yeah. How you doing, uh, YouTube? No, Facebook. Mm -hmm. <laughs> YouTube and Facebook. How you guys doing out there? I'm Quentin Avery. This is my beautiful wife, Dr. Avery. How you doing today, Dr. Avery? Doing good. Good morning. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Uh, today we're gonna be going over basic instructions. Instructions that are. Uh, actually found in the scriptures and um, I don't know if you noticed but the word Bible is not found in the Bible the actual word itself the actual word itself it's not found in the Bible and anybody uh, any of the uh, prophets the apostles never referred to the words written on with ink as mm -hmm. the Bible they're known as the scrolls. Yeah, yeah. The holy scriptures. But we know it as the Bible. And if you break the actual acronym down, it stands for basic instructions. Before, before leaving earth. Before leaving earth. You know we heard that on a on a movie as well. It was a TV series we was watching. Yeah, yeah. And and that's what the, the guy said. Yeah, his name nickname was Preach. Was it? I don't remember, but I remember them. Yeah, his nickname was Preach or Preacher. And he was a, that's a good point. He was actually explaining it to another person by saying it's actually designed for you to live it right, right here on earth. It's for the here and now. Mm -hmm. It's not for when you die. It's, uh, it's for the here and now. And um, we were talking last week about people that wanted to go up to the moon. Yep. They want to hop on a rocket and go to the moon. They're going to make it affordable <laughs> right. for people. But people uh -huh. actually don't make preparations before leaving Earth. No. Because they don't uh, take the time to read and study to prepare themselves uh -huh. for leaving Earth. And this is why it's the instruction, you know? You're going to need instruction manuals for almost everything that we buy mm -hmm. to assemble something for the dogs that we have. We're going to need instructions. instructions. What to do. How to train them, all that stuff. You're going to need instructions. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we will be discussing today, um, the instructions. So um, we all know that one day we're going to leave this earth. We all know that. But I don't know anybody that fills themselves with the knowledge and wisdom and the instructions before leaving Earth. Mm. Yeah, I don't know anybody. So, when it says basic instructions before leaving Earth, it doesn't really seem that basic. No, no, it's not like it says step one through step 100. Right, I mean these... One meaning every year of your life. Right. Yeah, it's not really that basic, right? It's not like uh, the instructions are common sense. But I think that everybody understands and knows that one day we're going to leave and there's information that we should know before entering wherever else uh, we're, we're, we're planning on entering. Mm -hmm. But we know we're going to have to exit the earth, mm -hmm. right? Um, one of the things that the rich young ruler said a lot of people focus on wordplay um wordplay when you listen to music when you listen to some of the latest artists they say man you know the way that they organize the words on the beat mm -hmm. you know they put you know and, and they put codes and you have to kind of figure out what they're saying in their music you know pretty much if they're saying something that they don't want um people to know but yeah, only people that do it, people that do it, they know. Mm -hmm. Hey, you talking about selling drugs, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, you talking about selling drugs, you say, red far, go deep. You know, that just means I'm, I'm going to send a package all the way to the East Coast. I'm going to go long. Oh, okay. 
don't know what that meant, though. You know, bread, like a Brett Favre throw a deep pass. They'll say, Brett, you know, it's, you know, stuff like that. They yeah. just, but it's wordplay. So one of the things that Jesus said uh, when addressing the rich young ruler is that the rich young ruler, he, he, he asked Jesus, he wanted to inherit eternal life. Mm -hmm. And then Jesus told him, if you want to enter life, enter life, inherit life. Like, that's wordplay. Mm -hmm. I mean, not wordplay, but it's like when you look, when you, when you think about the instruction or the basic instructions, inherit life, you're already born, you're already living. So how can you inherit life? And then Jesus is talking to somebody who's already living, say, if you want to enter life. Yeah, the enter life would be kind of confusing, but the um, but the inherit life, meaning inheriting the the next the next life. Mm -hmm. Did you want to clean it? Yeah. Sorry. Okay. All right. That's cool. Uh, we just got two new dogs, so uh, we want to make sure that we uh, but uh, make sure we tend to them a little bit. But she's still listening, so. Everyone knows in order to enter something, you must exit something. I mean, that's pretty com pretty much common sense. If you want to enter something, you're going to have to exit something. So we're on the road, on the streets. We're walking. We see a Starbucks. I say, honey, you want to get some Starbucks? She says, yeah, get some Starbucks. In order to go into the Starbucks, we must exit the street to enter into the Starbucks. Once we get our coffee, then... We must exit the Starbucks and then enter the streets. Exiting and entering is very, very, very important. And in order to enter into a Starbucks, you must first see the Starbucks. You must know what you're entering into, which is sort of on the lines of the conversation that Jesus had with Nicodemus. Unless a man be born again, he can't even see the kingdom of God. So we have to know what we're entering into and know what we're exiting because if I see the Starbucks I know I'm in, I know when I enter that place I'm going to get some coffee that's what they sell uh, so without the instructions like we said it's not referred to as a Bible in the Bible it's referred to as the scrolls when you look at the scrolls the scroll is going to be unrolling it's going to be painting a picture. It's just like Hollywood. When they are, uh, they, they letting that film roll. There she goes, she's back. They letting that film roll. And that's how the scrolls are. When you read the scrolls, you should be unrolling them and it should be painting a picture and the movie should be playing in your mind of exactly what's going on in those scrolls. Did, did you miss anything that I said about sure. exiting and entering? You see a Starbucks in order to, you're on the streets. Mm -hmm. In order to enter that Starbucks, you must exit the streets. There's a sign that says exit when you leave Starbucks. Yeah. Yeah. So you're exiting Starbucks and you're entering the streets. Mm -hmm. So when Jesus is saying you want to enter life, mm -hmm. you're going to need to know uh, what you're entering into. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it, if, if you already living life, young living life, middle age living life, old living life, vacation, whatever, you need to know what you're going to enter. Yeah. Because we know we're going to exit. <laughs> but people don't prepare themselves with the instructions on the here and now, how to live, and their exit, their departure. They want to hop on a space rocket and depart from Earth to go to the moon. Well, they don't, they don't work on it until maybe... They get really sick, and then now I'm trying to get my skip preparation. Yeah. Well, this, this is the instruction. These are the unrolling the scrolls. It's going to paint a picture. It's going to give you a visual. Um, uh, for example, when Moses, when the, the first five books, which is Moses' work, mm -hmm. that's a scroll that was rolled up because Moses didn't enter into the next portion of the book, which is starts with Joshua. Mm -hmm. He went somewhere else. And we know he went somewhere else because he appears on the mountain with Jesus 
when and, and prepares Jesus for his departure. Amen. That's what the scriptures say. He prepared him. They talked to him about his death, about his departure. So Moses and Elijah, the law and the prophet, are preparing Jesus for what's about to come. But the preparation needs to be done all the time. I mean, it's all around us. We need to be preparing ourselves um, to for our departure. And that eventually is going to happen. We know it's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. Um, so without the instruction of the scrolls, the Holy Scriptures, um, to show you what you are entering, you won't know the way. Uh, you won't know how to inherit. You won't know how to enter the place where righteousness dwells. Or what to do to be prepared. Yeah, Peter, Peter wrote in 2 Peter 3 and 13, um, in 2 Peter 3 and 13, So in 2 Peter 3 and 13, he says, but in, but in keeping with the promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness dwells. His promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth. Where righteousness dwells. Mm. Well, I mean, and, and, and if you think about it, this is just what we would like to call a visual of the scrolls. If you look at, and you don't have to go there because it took you a while to find that one. Well, this goes, yeah, I was going to say. Okay, so in Isaiah 34 and 4, it's going to say, all the stars in the sky will be dissolved and the heavens just just pull them out so we can hmm? just pull them 34 and 4 if you read that one okay oh bring them out oh. they can't pick it they have to try to get out okay 34 and 4 Okay, I'm going to read it. All the stars in the sky will be dissolved and the heavens rolled up like a scroll. All the starry hosts will fall like withered leaves from the vine, like shriveled figs from the fig tree. But you see, it's rolled up like a scroll. And then in the book of Revelation 6 and 14, it says the heavens receded like a scroll being rolled up and every mountain and island was removed from it. Now what Peter said is that there's a place where righteousness dwells. The new heaven, the new earth. There's a place where righteousness dwells. So, anyway, not to get, it's, it's, it's basic instructions, but it's really not so basic, but it requires a lot of study. To know what Jesus is talking about when he tells them in order to enter life. So he's telling them that you need to enter life. And he's saying you got to follow me in the regeneration. At the renewal of all things. Follow me. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you have now met the dogs. <laughs> they, I, they wanted to be in the video. All right. Now, in Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians 4 and 8. 1 Thessalonians 4 and 8. It says, Therefore, anyone who rejects this instruction does not reject human beings. Stop. Does not reject human beings, but God. The very God who gives you his Holy Spirit. Mm. By rejecting the instruction, you're not rejecting the man. You're rejecting God. The very God that gives you the Holy Spirit. Mm. Now, the Holy Spirit is not basic. All right? Nobody could tell you about the Holy Spirit. You have to study the Holy Spirit. You got to read and study scripture 
to know what the Holy Spirit is. Someone can't tell you, this is how you get the Holy Spirit. Yeah. The Holy Spirit is this. The Holy Spirit is that. Trust me, I've been studying this for a while, and, and it's not something that someone can tell you. You have to read and study it to know what it is. It's not the Holy Spirit. It's not a basic thing. So the Holy Spirit, I'm going to give you a few examples of what the Holy Spirit is and some chapters and verses. Okay. okay? The Holy Spirit is breath. Psalms 33 and 6. Life. Life. You said life? I thought you said like. Life. Life. Right. Now, Psalms 33 and 6 says, By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, the star, their starry host, by the breath of his mouth. Now, when you go, Holy Spirit is breath. Not done yet, but when you go to Genesis 2 and 7, Scripture is going to say, God formed the man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his mm -hmm. nostrils mm -hmm. the breath, breath of life. Cool. Right? <laughs> now, in John 20 and 19, after the resurrection of the Messiah, yeah. Scripture says that the disciples were all together and the doors were locked, but they were in fear of the Jewish leaders. And then Jesus came and stood among them. He didn't need no key because mm -hmm. now he resurrected. He is the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So you got to study this thing. Now, he came and stood among them. Peace be on to you. And the Scripture says he breathed on them. And said, receive the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. That's what it says in John 20, 19 and 20. It says, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. Through my breath of life. Mm. Now the Holy Spirit is breath. Now, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit is power. In the book of Numbers, Moses began complaining to the Creator. As he was complaining to the creator, it was too much for him to bear. Yeah. Dealing with all those Israelites. It was too much for him to bear. So in Numbers 11 and 25, the Lord took some of the power of the spirit that was on Moses and put it on 70 of the elders. Power. From Moses. From Moses. That's how much power Moses had. Yeah. That's how much of God's spirit, spirit was on Moses. Now, in the book of Kings, you have Elisha and Elijah. Mm -hmm. Now, Elisha was Elijah was getting ready to go to heaven. The Creator was getting ready to take Elijah back to uh, to heaven, mm -hmm. and Elijah said. I would like to inherit a double portion of your spirit. Inherit a double portion of your spirit. So you have to study the Holy Spirit. Now, Elijah has seven recorded miracles. But then Elisha asks for a double portion of his spirit. And then he has 14 recorded miracles. That's recorded in the scrolls. Yeah, I remember that. Now, Elijah told a woman, he, 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 he gave a prophecy, that she, 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 uh, what can I do for you? By this time, you're gonna be, have a son. The woman said, don't mislead me. Mm -hmm. and, then by, and then she became pregnant and had a son. Then the son died. And so she went to go see Elisha and said, didn't I tell you not to mislead me? Didn't I tell you not to get my hopes up? You told me, yeah. you, gave me you gave me a son and then he died. You know, I didn't need the son, but now I got him. I loved him. And then he died. Why would you do that to me? So then Elijah went, he resurrected, restored that boy. He laid on him mouth to mouth. Gave him I to eye, hand to hand. 
And after he did that, the boy sneezed seven times. Mm. When you sneeze, do you inhale before you sneeze? You do. <laughs> mouth, seven times. mouth to mouth. Uh, a person needs to be restored. They hold their nose and blow mouth to mouth. The creator breathe the breath of life into Adam through his nostrils. Mm. Jesus breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is also a deposit. Paul says in 2 Corinthians uh, 1 and 22, he says, uh, Paul says in 2 Corinthians 1 and 22. Yeah. He says in 2 Corinthians 1 and 22, he says, Now it is God who made both us and you stand firm in Christ. He anointed us, setting his seal of ownership on us and put his spirit on in our hearts as a deposit guaranteeing what is to come. There's that inheritance again. Paul is saying he set a, a seal of ownership on us, his spirit on us, breathing in and out of us, guaranteeing what is to come. Now, what is to come? We, 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 we're preparing to enter life, but we're already in life, but we're preparing to enter life. We're preparing to enter the afterlife. The, yeah, right. And the instructions is right here in front of us. But we're not reading and studying the instruction. So in order to inherit anything, in order for anything to be passed on to you, someone has to die. Mm -hmm. Death. Somebody has to die. Something has to die. Now in Matthew... Uh, oh, actually, I got one more scripture. Uh, Ephesians 1 and 13. What's up, Nation? Looks like you on the uh, on the feed posting comments. <laughs> this is our new challenge with the puppies. You get that? Uh, 1 and 22. Nothing today, Dr. Avery. I got it. I got it. Let me read it. One and twenty-two. One and twenty-two. And God placed all things under His feet and appointed Him to be head over everything for the church, which is His body, the fulfillment of Him who fills everything in every way. All right. So, oh, wrong scripture. It was one and thirteen. Sorry. It says, and you. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with the seal, the promised Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to praise be his glory. There it is again, the deposit guaranteeing what is to come. Now, the rich man, young ruler, he said, I want to inherit eternal life. Mm -hmm. The spirit breathing in and out of you is guaranteeing what is to come. But in order to get something that is to come, an inheritance, something has to die. Yeah. Now, if you go to uh, Matthew 20 and 28, You there? Mm -hmm. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. 
All right. So he gave his life as a ransom for many. So he didn't come to serve, but he came to. He, so he did not come to serve, but to serve. He came to serve and to give his life as a ransom. Mm -hmm. Now, the book of Hebrews 9 and 15 is going to say that for this reason, Christ is the mediator of a new covenant that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. Now that he has died as a ransom to set them free from the sins committed under the first covenant. So Jesus is a ransom. Mm -hmm. And there's a eternal inheritance. inheritance. Hmm. Pretty sure that's what the rich young ruler was con was concerned about. Eternal life. Eternal inheritance. People want something that's going to last forever. Yeah. Well, who wouldn't want something that's going to last forever? So he's dying as a ransom, but then if you look at the verse 16, it says, in the case of a will, it is necessary to prove the death of the one who made it because a will is in force only when someone has died. It never takes effect while the one who made it is still living. Mm -hmm. You can't cash out no life insurance policy unless you prove the death. Yeah. Unless you sell it back to him. <laughs> and then, know, you, yeah, you can't. That's the point of it. Right. It never takes effect while the person is still living. Now, Jesus, the prince of this world, mm -hmm. now stands condemned. Did you know he was a prince? Yes. Okay. In the order of Melchizedek. He was a priest. Priest. In the order of Melchizedek. Prince is a is a hat we don't oh. touch. Mm-hmm. Prince. Yeah, I remember where it said where it says that. Uh go to John. Um, if you can make it there, go to John. Mm -hmm. The 16th chapter, verse 7. Now, John 16 and 7, it says, But very truly I tell you, it is for your good that I am going away. That ransom has to go away. Unless I go away, Prince. the advocate will not come to you. Or the comfort, that's the Holy Spirit. See, you see, you see why you had to study the Holy Spirit? Somebody just can't tell you what the Holy Spirit is. I didn't already didn't touch on a lot of different roles of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Breath, power, right. a deposit, right? Okay, now the comforter, the advocate that's going to teach you what to say when you need to say it, if you have this deposit constantly. And you don't just go to the bank once to make a deposit. You go to the bank all the time to make a deposit. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, now, but if I, he says, but if I go... The advocate will not come to you. See, Jesus is a ransom. He has to go. He says, but if I go, I will send him to you. And he told his disciples. He breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit after his, after his resurrection. Now he says, when he comes, he will prove the world to be in the wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment about sin because people do not believe in me about righteousness because I am going to the Father where you can see me no longer. And about judgment, because the prince of this world now stands condemned. Now, you know when you're a prince, you in line to be the king. Mm -hmm. Someone has to die for you to be the king. Yep, and to, in order for you to inherit the kingdom. Yeah, in order to inherit the kingdom. But God can't die. G-O-D, the most high. He can't die. So, it's the word within Jesus is going to be the logos, the word, in that body that was prepared to be the ransom. So, the very word that brought the world into existence and then sin entered into the world to corrupt the world is the very word that's going to die on that cross. See, Jesus had so much of his Father's spirit on him. He could forgive sins. He could resurrect the dead. He could turn water into wine. He could multiply fish and bread. He could recover the sight of the blind, the deaf, the lame, the paralegic. He That's could heal disease. There's a lot of power. Lots of power. 
Yeah. Well, well, Moses had a lot of power too. He parted the Red Sea. He, uh, all those different plagues in Egypt. Even a uh, guy told him to make a serpent and put it on a pole and everybody that got bit by venomous snakes will be healed just yeah. by looking at that pole. But it came through Moses. Came through Moses. So he had a lot of power. And so what happened with um, when it was time for him to be that ransom, when it was time for him to be that ransom, he, uh, the Jewish leaders sent for him, him for him to be arrested, mm -hmm. and he said, "Don't you know that at my father's disposal? Don't you know I can call my father and he'll he'll call twelve legions of angels at his disposal? But then if I do that." How will my father's words be fulfilled? Yeah. You had a purpose. This is what I, I must do this because nothing that my father says will, uh, will fail. Mm -hmm. Everything he says will be fulfilled and everything he says must come to pass. So he could have considered himself. Go to Philippians. That's a really hard one to find. going to be after, huh? I got it. You got it? Uh, Philippians 2 and 6 and 8. Philippians 2 and 6. Yeah, go ahead. Who being in very nature God did not consider I can't see it. I can't take my glasses off. I can read it. Alright. I got it. Who being Who? I got it. Who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself to become obedient to death, even on a cross even death on a cross even death on a cross mm -hmm. death on a cross is a, 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 a male factor people who were in opposition to the to the Roman Empire they were criminals the cross is a criminal's death now the Jewish mm -hmm. leaders yeah now the Jewish leaders if you break a law they stone you mm -hmm. remember mm -hmm. teacher this woman was caught in the act of adultery. The law most say we should stone her. Stone her. So, Jewish law, you'd be stoned. They stoned Stephen. When it was time for him to die, they stoned Stephen. Mm -hmm. So, if they wanted to kill Jesus, they should have stoned him. But they couldn't kill Jesus. Now, when they wanted to, when they asked Jesus, who gave you this authority? He said, well, I'm going to ask you a question. John's baptism, was it of heaven origin, earthly origin? Mm -hmm. And they said, well, we know that the people hold John to be a prophet. If we say it's of earthly origin, the people going to stone us. So they worried about them stones. Then <laughs> it was teachers of the law. They could be stoned by the people. And they also could bring a person out and say, Law most say we should stone this person. But if they go against who they held, they the people love John. You can't and, and everybody went out to get the baptism. Right. They believed John. They held him to be a prophet. Even though he didn't perform any signs. When a prophet came, they perform signs. And that's what they wanted to see. But John didn't have to do any of that because he came with the power. He came uh, in the power and the spirit of Elijah. Do you remember that? Uh, J um, no, not that one. Okay, uh, go to Luke, the very first uh, chapter. It says uh, Luke one and seventeen. It says. And he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? 
Now, Elijah gave to Elisha, which all came from the Father, a double portion. Mm -hmm. And then when John came, he came in the spirit and power, Holy Spirit, which you got to learn and got to be taught about the Holy Spirit. Now, this scripture says, um, if you look at verse 15, talking about the birth of John, Luke 1 and 15, he says, For he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He is never to take wine or other fermented drinks, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before he is born. You got to learn about that Holy Spirit. People have to learn about the Holy Spirit. You can't just be told about the Holy Spirit. It's these basic, it's really not basic instructions. It's really, you know, it's the scrolls mm -hmm. in the scriptures that you must read, study, memorize, regurgitate, rehearse, and let them keep playing. It's like your favorite, uh, Dr. Burks always talk about your favorite DVD. You know that DVD, you know what's going to happen, but you always watch it because it's one of your favorite it. movies. Yeah. I love to watch every time Troy come on. I love, even though I know Achilles is going to kill and he's going to die at the end, I still watch it and say, why he had to die? <laughs> he could have kept on killing because I was enjoying the movie. But uh, back to Philippians. Uh, you may not have a finger there, but uh, I'm going to go to Philippians and then I'm going to take it to Hebrews. Come on, you're sleeping good. Stay asleep. This is the hyper one. Okay. Um, Philippians? Yeah. So Philippians, now, this is what's going to happen. He's a ransom. Jesus is a ransom. He had to die for uh, the scripture in 915 says, Hebrews 915. You don't have to go there. Let me just read this. We already read it. It says, for this reason, Christ is the mediator of the new covenant that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance now that he has died as a ransom to yep. set them free from the sins committed under the first covenant. He could, in this scripture, Philippians, it says he could have considered equality with God, something that could have been used to his advantage. He had that much power on him that he could have stop them from taking from arresting him when he was being talked to by Pontius Pilate Pontius Pilate asked him a few questions he says are you a king and Jesus said is, is that your idea or did someone put you up to say that <laughs> and then he said my kingdom is not even from this world he says so you are a king then he said, but your people, the Jewish leaders, they're the ones that handed you over to me. And Jesus said, that ain't my people. He didn't say that ain't my people. He said, he said, my people would have prevented any arrest from the Jewish leaders in my kingdom. This wouldn't have went down in my kingdom. <laughs> I'm not of this world. That's what he said. I'm not of this. this is, I'm not of this world. I'm mm -hmm. from above. You from below. Mm -hmm. That's what he said. So he could have used this to his advantage. The very words of God is going to be found in human likeness. God sent his son in the likeness of sinful flesh. Yep. Appeared as a man. And that word is going to be crucified, even a death on the cross. That word. And then the Holy Spirit is going to be able to give us a new heaven, a new earth where righteousness dwells. And so that's why that born again, uh, confusing title, born again is so confusing because people have to study it and learn the instruction that come with the scrolls, that come with the Holy Scriptures. Well, also the instructions of being born again, right? There's instructions <laughs> in the instructions. The instructions in the instructions, huh? Right, it is. Uh -huh. This is not one big basic instruction that oversees everything. Well, yeah, it's like we talking about the Holy Spirit. Like we just kind of, kind of stuck on the Holy Spirit, but we're talking about 
uh, basic instructions. You have instructions for prayer. You have instructions for fasting. You have instructions for uh, the, the commandments. You know, even one of them said, uh, which, which commandments are the greatest ones? You know, um, yeah, there's a lot. There's lots of instructions in there. So they're nowhere near basic, you know. But like I said, you won't find the word Bible in the Bible because the Ethiopian eunuch was coming back from worshiping in Jerusalem and he had the scrolls of Isaiah. Right. If you go to the synagogue, they are, uh, the attendant handed Jesus the scroll of Isaiah and he found a place and read it. The spirit of the Lord was on me. You know, it, in, in, in the book of Numbers, it says the spirit that was on Moses rested on those elders. And then in Isaiah, it says that this, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of might, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of understanding will rest on him. And it gives a prophecy, which is the scroll, about the one who is to come from the stump of Jesse, meaning a descendant from Jesse and a descendant from David, which is everything that the creator said, right? So if you let that roll, like I'm let's see, I'm letting this, it's rolling in my head. <laughs> It's rolling, so now I'm just giving you, I'm painting the picture like Picasso. I'm just giving you play by play, like my favorite DVD. Yeah. yeah I can tell you about my favorite DVD. You watched it and read it over and over again. Um, and and I and I never stop. The Book of Eli, woman asks Denzel Washington, "You read that book every day?" And without hesitation, he said, "Without fail." Mm -hmm. Every day. I never fail to read this book every day. It's that interesting. Yeah, it's a lot. It, it's that interesting. So, in John five and uh, eighteen, in John five and eighteen, I got both of my hands back. Yeah, you were you were you were slipping mm -hmm. with, your, with, your, with your dogs. All right. So, in John five and eighteen. He says, um, Why for this reason? Uh, it says, so, um, go to 16. So because Jesus was doing these things on the Sabbath, the Jewish leaders began to persecute him. In his defense, Jesus said to them, my father is always at work to this very day. My father is always at his work. To this very day, I too am working. Mm -hmm. For this reason, they tried all the more to kill him. Not only was he breaking the Sabbath, but even he was even calling God his own father, making himself equal with God. The scripture says that we read in Matthew that he did not come to be served. He came to serve. He came to work. And he was working for a higher power. So therefore, when, you, when, you, when, when you're getting your instruction, it's very, very important not to stop at the most simplest answer that you could find, but continue to work and search mm -hmm. because God is that great. He's that great. He's that beyond. And, and we have to continue to, to continue to, to search, to search and, and work become wise and wiser and wiser and wiser right so Jesus is calling God his own father now in Hebrews 5 beginning at matter of fact you brought out that um, he was a priest mm -hmm. I was bringing out he has many hats but I was uh, another scripture we just read Christ was the mediator and, and uh, that's another hat right uh -huh. and, and another scripture we brought out you brought out he was a priest now uh, scripture says in uh, Hebrews 5 and 5 he says in the same way Christ did not take on himself the glory of becoming a high priest mm -hmm. right yep. I, it wasn't his own doing that made him a high priest his father made him 
high priest. But God said to him, you are my son. Today I have become your father. And in another place it says, you are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. Now in verse 7 it says, during the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petition with fervent cries and tears to the one who could save him from death. Imagine that. Mm. Considering myself equal with God, but I'm offering prayers to the Most High, the one who can save me from death. Yeah. You see, you have to rightly divide Scripture. Rightly divide Scripture is knowing what means what when it comes to the Son, when it comes to the Father, when it comes to the Holy Spirit, and not adding all this Trinity stuff in there. It's not in here. I can listen to people say it, but it don't line up with the scripture. Now, it says, the one who could save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. See, he had to continue to submit. Like, we have to continue to submit to the word. Mm -hmm. But if you don't know the word, how can you submit to the word? I, I, me and Dr. Burks had a study uh, last week and it says people know how to resist the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. but they don't know how to resist the devil Dr. Burks said why? because you don't have to be taught to resist the Holy Spirit you come out of the womb resisting the Holy Spirit because of the corruption that Thank is you. in the world you have to be taught you need instruction on how to resist the devil. That don't come naturally. So that's why the scripture tells you to resist the devil. Mm -hmm. That's why the scripture never tells us to resist the Holy Spirit. The scripture says that in the book of in the book of Acts, it says that when they were getting ready, to, when they were stoning Stephen, Stephen says he took them all the way back to Abraham's day, ancient times, mm -hmm. and he said, "You stubborn." Just like your ancestors, you always resist the Holy Spirit. That's why Moses had such a hard time with all those guys. Resisting the Holy Spirit. Just eat the bread. Eat the cake, anime. Remember that movie? <laughs> Just eat the bread, the manna, and 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 and, 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 and your feet, your shoes is not gonna wear out, your clothes is not gonna wear out. You're not gonna get hungry. Just eat the bread and the water don't uh, complaining uh, man we need the, the meat and the garlic I want to go back to Egypt and so Moses had such a hard time because they kept resisting yeah they were there were a lot of resistance I mean even throughout the, the, throughout the Bible in general right a lot of going backwards a lot of resisting more resisting more teaching more resisting right and 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 that's why we have human uh, interaction and testimony that everything that is written in the scrolls were written so we can learn from. But a lot of times we look at the behavior and identify with the behavior and say, man, this is how we should behave because that's how they behave. Solomon was a pimp. That's what I heard people say. Solomon was a pimp. You seen how many concubines and wives he had? If I'm going to be like somebody, I'm going to be like Solomon. If you think can relate. I can relate to pimping. <laughs> you know, person killed, uh, man, David, David killed tens of thousands. Saul killed thousands. David killed his tens of thousands. I'm a killer. If I'm going to be like somebody, I'm going to be like David. David was ordered to kill. Uh, uh, Moses had to keep his hands raised while the Israelites war. went to war. Yeah. They was winning the battle when Moses had his hands up. They had to go to war because God would drive out all the people that he it was part of his creation, but he would drive out the people who were going to be worshiping idols and not acknowledging him as the true God. So he would drive them out. And he would say, get, get rid of those people out of your land because if you don't, they're going to persuade you to live like them. You're going to be worshiping idols. You're going to be sacrificing to idols if you if you don't drive them out. Um, verse 8, still uh, Hebrews 5 and 8, it says, Son, though he was, 
He learned obedience from what he suffered. And once made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obeyed him and was designated by God to be a high priest in the order of Melchizedek. Jesus had to learn obedience. Jesus didn't come out the womb obedient because the scripture just said he learned it. Mm. Yep. So he had instruction. He knew about Elijah shutting, that, shutting the sky for uh, I think it was three and a half years and then he prayed and it rained again. He knew about all of that stuff. He had to study, all just like teaching. we have to study. We need the instruction. Some people don't even study the instruction because they feel that, is this all God has to say in this book right here? He's not saying nothing else? They don't even know what he did say. Well, there's a lot of words in depends on what Bible you got, right? This one has 1,500. 1600 uh, pages. Mm -hmm. it's, a lot, it's a lot of knowledge in here. It's a lot of knowledge, but people don't have any of this knowledge. Like I said, they think that if I rely on this book, then it obviously means that God is no longer speaking. But they don't even know what he said mm -hmm. in this book. Therefore, it's what they call blind belief. Because if you don't know what he said and how he fulfilled what he said, and then somebody said, hey, man, this is all you need to do. Then how do you know what you need to believe? believe? How do you know? What if I just touched you and said, receive the Holy Spirit? That mean you got it? No. <laughs> what if I just breathed on you. Nope, not unless you Jesus. <laughs> you, you, you see? Mm -hmm. But you need to know what's going on. Jesus called God his father, his own father. And the prince of this world stood condemned. They handed him over to Pontius Pilate to get that criminal's death, to be hung on a cross. Mm -hmm. And he was serving the eternal king. Yeah. yeah. He told Samuel, he said, give him a king. Israelites want a king, give him a king. They're not rejecting you. They rejected me as king, the eternal king. The prince of this world is serving the eternal king. And then Jesus says, follow me in the regeneration and renewal of all things when the son of man sits on his throne. When he sits on his throne, he is the king. Because the creator is going to say, if you look at Hebrews 1 and 1, the creator, that's why you got to write the divine scripture. That's why you need your instruction. You need your instruction manual. You need to, you, we should never stop studying this manual. Never stop. Daily. Should never stop. Should always be, some, uh, what do they call it, run on to-do lists, uh, run on lists or whatever like you should always have a topic that you transitioning to you should be reading something and be like oh you know i find that interesting that paul said this or jesus said this and then it led me there and you know you should always be going from some topic to the next topic Continue. you should never be sitting here talking about uh, i don't know where where to start i don't even know um this book is all a blur i don't even get it but it says in Hebrews 1, uh, beginning at, if, if you look at Hebrews 1, it's going to take you, uh, if you get to 5, it's going to say, you are my son, I am your father again. But then when you get to verse 8, it says, this is what the, the author of Hebrews wrote that God said. He said, but about the son, he says, your throne, O God, will last forever and ever. ever he calls his son god christ is the head of the man god is the head of christ even though he called 
his son God, he still has a God over him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he still does. The father, you can never out, you can never get older than your father. <laughs> you, you, my father is still my father. I'm never going to outgrow, I can outgrow him uh, physically in wisdom, mm -hmm. but I'm never going to get older than him, you know, so. Not unless you put, turn back the hand of time. Yeah, yeah, so the prince of this world came to serve the eternal king, so if we want to enter life, if we want to enter life, we need to get this instruction. And as we get this instruction on how to enter life, we have to follow him. He told the rich young ruler, follow me. He told Thomas, you know the way. Thomas said, we don't know the way. And Jesus said, I am the way. Mm -hmm. You know me. Yeah. And this is the way. Well, he, okay, now you said you know me. Most people don't know half the things that Jesus said. They don't know his words. They don't know his birth, his life, his death, his resurrection. But yeah. if you but if you ask them, Jesus is everything. They know Jesus. Jesus know them. You know what the Creator told Moses? He said, he told Moses. Um, this is what he told Moses. Let me see. I think it's Exodus thirty three. He told Moses, he said, uh, 33, 14, the Lord replied, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. I and, didn't get that. Could you try again? Um, rest. Then Moses said to him, verse 15, if your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. How will anyone know that you are pleased with me and with your people unless you go with us. What else will distinguish me and your people from all other people mm -hmm. on the face of the earth? Mm -hmm. And the Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing you have asked because I am pleased with you and I know you by name. Wow. Know you by name, Moses. Know you by name. So you're not going to be mixed up with the rest of them. He knew Moses by name. He know me by name. He don't know everybody by name. And, and, and some people will tell you he know everybody by name. But Jesus said he already knew who was going to believe and who wasn't going to believe. And he said, Father, the one you have enabled, the one you have given to me, I protected them while I was in the world. And I mm -hmm. protect them by my name and your name. Mm -hmm. The one that didn't believe, they doomed. I can't waste time trying to go save everybody. Jesus wasn't tripping, so why am I tripping? <laughs> I got I work the internet, YouTube, Facebook. If you listen, you believe, you believe. If you don't, you don't. Oh. I'm not forcing nothing down nobody's throat. Putting the word out. Putting the word. That's all. That's uh, water, plant. God give the increase. That's all I'm gonna do. Mm -hmm. That's all they did. Yeah, you know, running down the street, knocking on people's door. Do you know Jesus? Passing out the Bible to them. Passing out flyers and they stuff. They don't do that anymore, do they? Oh, yes, they do. They still? Yes, they do. They still hand out the Bible to people? I don't know. Remember that? Remember? It ain't, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't working. Cause, because Philip, the Holy Spirit, told Philip to go up to that chariot with the Ethiopian unit and ask him this question. Do you understand what you're reading? <laughs> do you understand what you're reading? Or do you know what you're reading? And he was just, nope. He said, how can I unless somebody explains it to me? Mm -hmm. How can I unless somebody gives me the instruction of how these scrolls are supposed to work? And he was trying to yeah. understand. Yeah, I mean, you read the Old Testament and the New Testament some people got the Old Testament. Some people got the New Testament and don't even know that you need them both. Like a bird need two wings. Yeah, you, they true. don't even know 
what Jesus is doing in the New Testament scriptures because he's fulfilling things that God said in the Old Testament through, through the people. Happen. Don't even know. A ransom. People just, oh man, that was cold how they did Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> That's cold how they did Jesus, man. He didn't even do nothing. They just killed the man. You know, don't even understand that he was a ransom. That it was fulfilling the plan to go to to enter life. Paul said he was a life-giving spirit, mm -hmm. a life-quickening spirit, so that he could go to the belly of the earth for three days and three nights. Like Old Testament scriptures say, Jonah went to the yeah. belly of the of big fish mm -hmm. for three days and three nights. Jesus said, this man, this generation here, what a wicked generation this is here you ask for signs I mean none gonna be given to you except the sign of Jonah now when I get into this belly of the earth for three days and three nights now we are gonna be able to enter into life you're gonna be able to be clothed with immortality now the Holy Spirit is gonna be looked at as a spiritual seed not an incorruptible seed, or not a corruptible seed, but an incorruptible seed breathing in and out of you. Mm -hmm. And now you can enter life. But it's but but like the man said on the movie, it's for the here and now. It ain't for I'm on my deathbed, man. Can you uh I knew a guy on this deathbed? They put a CD on, man. Listen to this before you die. Hmm. Somebody came and, hey, man, uh, let me help you in your transition and gave him a few scriptures. I wonder. I wonder. I mean, I don't know. I don't have a heaven or a hell to send anybody to, but I wonder, like, can you do that? I don't, I, I don't know. I mean, how much of that information is he actually learning about Melchizedek, the new order, the priesthood, the old priesthood, the one in the order of Aaron, the one in the order of Melchizedek, the ancient world, the flood, the fire, uh, uh, born again, the Holy Spirit. You know how much study that stuff takes? A lot. <laughs> it takes a lot of study. So if you, if you get told by the hospital, you got three months to live. Man, we already in like year five, six of studying. Barely scratching the surface. There's lots to learn, lots of instructions on all parts of your life. <laughs> all right. Well, right? Yeah. All, all yes. parts of your life. Yeah. yeah. What were those four corners you like to say? Financial, oh. emotion, emotional. Finance. You have you four like, the, like the physical, the spiritual, the mental, yeah, and the financial. Yeah, yeah. Much to learn on all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Much to learn on all that stuff. Beyond Moses, beyond the commands, beyond that. There's more. Right, because even when you look at finances, right, somebody could die and leave you a bunch of money, but somebody did die and leave us a bunch of spirit. Many inherited you want to inherit eternal life you're going to need some of this good spirit on you you know so so, so, so he wanted to inherit all right all right good study you want to say goodbye goodbye thank you man i know it was a challenging one with puppies but this is really good more instructions okay all right, you guys, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Uh, you going to tell them the names of your dogs? Oh, this would be Midnight. And this is Dawn. Bye. All right, bye. See you guys next time.